Uh, number 18, we want to graph the inequality. <clears throat> so a couple things here. Since this is a uh, quadratic, I definitely need the vertex for this one. So I do the opposite of b over 2 times a, which is 2 over negative 2, which is a negative 1. That's the x value for my vertex. I've got to plug it back in to get my y value. And just be careful when you plug this back in, especially in terms of your signs. This is a negative 1 square root 1, then tack on the negative sign, uh, plus 2, plus 3. So it looks like I get a 4 here. And uh, really, there's one other point that would be really easy to find in this guy right here. That's my y-intercept. My y-intercept is 0, 3. And this should be enough information for me to graph this thing. So I've got negative 1, 4 is right here. A y-intercept at 0, 3 is right here. I can reflect that point. I know this thing's going to open down. And that's enough information for this one. Uh, in fact, I look back at the inequality sign now, and I, I see that there's no equal to condition, which means I'm going to use a dotted uh, curve as I graph this parabola. And now I just need to decide, am I going to shade inside the parabola or outside the parabola? So I pick a point. I pick a point like 0, 0. If I plug a 0 in for y, and I plug a 0 in for x, I end up with 0 is greater than 3, which is false. So instead of shading inside the parabola, I shade everything outside the parabola. Okay? I pick a point. If the point works, I shade that side of the parabola. If it doesn't work, I shade the other side. Okay? Number 19, when we're solving these algebraically, we essentially ignore the inequality sign to start. So I just write it as uh, an equal sign, so equal 0. Now I solve it the way I always solve it. I build a bridge. That's a uh, negative 8, two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add to a positive 2, 4 and a negative 2. So this factors into an x plus 4 and an x minus 2. I set each factor equal to 0. And I solve each. Here I subtract the 4. Here I'm going to add the 2. So I get two answers of x equals a negative 4 and x equals a positive 2. But now I have to go back and remember, hey, this was an inequality. So I put these on a number line, the negative 4 and a positive 2. And then I just need to decide, am I shading inside or outside? Uh, for each of these values, I'm going to use a closed dot because there's an equal to condition. And now I just pick a point. Uh, I know that in between here somewhere, uh, I've got the value of 0. Okay. So I've got a value of 0 here. So I plug 0 in. Uh, and when I do that, I get negative 8 is less than or equal to 0, which is a true statement. So 0 works, so I shade everything in between here. But I'm still not done. I have to write that as an inequality. This is an and inequality, which looks like this. Negative 4 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2. So I draw my graph and then use the graph to write the inequality. Same thing with number 20 here. Again, I ignore the inequality sign to start. I build a bridge, two numbers that multiply to a 12 but add to a negative 8 or a negative 6 and a negative 2. It factors into an x minus 6 and an x minus 2. I set each factor equal to 0. And I solve each. Here I add the 6. Here I add the 2. So I've got x equals a 6 and x equals a 2. But now I have to remember, hey, this is an inequality. I've got a 2 and a 6. 0 is actually over here somewhere now, so keep that in mind. I've got an open dot of, at each of these values because there's no equal to condition. If I plug in 0, I get something like 12 is greater than 0, which is true, but 0 is on the outside, so I shade the outside. All right, Which means what I have here is an or inequality that says x is less than 2 or x is greater than 6. Okay. Uh, for the last two here, we're solving the system of equations. You should always solve these by substitution. So if y equals this, I can plug this in for y right here. x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals a 2x minus 2. And now to solve this uh, equation, I simply subtract the 2x from each side. And I'm going to have to add the 2 to each side. So I end up with an x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. And now from here, I want to try solving this guy, so I, I build a bridge. Two numbers that multiply to a 4 but add to a negative 5 or a negative 4 and a negative 1. So this is an x minus 4 
and an x minus 1. I set each factor equal to 0. And I solve each. Here I add the 4 to each side. Here I add the 1 to each side. So the two answers I get here are x equals 4 and x equals 1. But that's still not enough. This was a system of equations. I've got a 4, but I need the y value that goes with it. I've got a 1, but I need the y value that goes with it. So I'm going to plug those x values in over here for x. Okay? If I plug the 4 in, that gives me an 8 minus 2, which is 6. If I plug the 1 in, I get 2 minus 2, which is 0. So these are my two solutions to this system of equations. I get two ordered pairs, uh, an x value with a y value, another x value with a y value. Okay? Next one's very similar. If y equals this, I plug it in for y right here. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals x squared minus 3x plus 11. And now I just need to solve this thing. i got to get it set equal to 0. I subtract the x squared from each side. I'm also going to add the 3x to each side. I'm also going to subtract the 11 from each side. Okay, So that gives me an x squared plus 5x uh, minus 16. And that's not what I wanted for this particular example. Uh, let's see. This guy, that's right, there was a typo here. This guy was supposed to be a 9. Okay, so let's fix that up. Let me fix that up really quickly. So when I do that, that's a plus uh, 9 here. I'm going to subtract the 9 from each side, and that gives me a negative 14. Okay, and now I'm going to solve this guy. I build a bridge, two numbers that multiply to a negative 14, but add to a 5, or a 7, and a negative 2. So it's x plus 7 and x minus 2. I set each factor equal to 0 one more time. And I solve each. Here I get a negative 7. Here I add the 2 and get x equals 2. But now I need to write these as ordered pairs. I've got a negative 7 comma something because I need a y value that goes with it. I've got 2 comma something because I need a y value that goes with it. So I'm just going to plug these back in uh, to either one of these equations. So when I plug the negative 7 in, uh, it looks like I get a 79. When I plug the 2 in, it looks like I get a 7. So my two answers are the negative 7, 79, and the 2, 7. All right? Hope this was helpful, and good luck on your test.